And the Rotary Club of Accra, East and uh, Eau Claire of the United States of America have presented uh, some 50 thermal uh, congregators uh, to the uh, cervical, cervical Cancer uh, Prevention and Training Center of the Catholic Hospital in Bato. The cervical pre-cancer treatment devices purchased uh, with some 70,000 US dollars grant uh, from the Rotary Foundation will be distributed across the country. There's more. Cervical cancer is a malignant tumor of the lowermost part of the womb caused by the human papilloma virus. According to the International Cancer Organization, about 2,800 women are diagnosed with the disease every year in Ghana. About 1,700 patients die from the disease annually due to the lack of treatment facilities, equipment and specialty. This informed a decision by the management of the Catholic Hospital in Bato to set up the Cervical Cancer Prevention and Training Center to train health professionals in diagnosing and treating the disease. Dr. Kofi Efa is the head of the center. And these cancers and wards are not only on the cervix. For women, they, are, they can cause cancers on the vulva, of the vagina, of the cervix, of the anus, and of the oropharynx, the throat. For men, they can cause cancers of the penis, the anus, and the throat. To intensify the fight against cervical cancer, the Ritchie Club of Accra East and Eau Claire of the United States of America presented 50 thermal coagulators to the center. The president of the Ritchie Club of Accra East, Serge Ogan, indicated that it was his outfit's greatest desire to see women burdened with cervical cancer provided the best treatment to save their lives. And Rotarians are people who are always trying to identify needs in their communities and see how they can take or organize impactful projects. Seven years ago we were at Battle Hospital to start with them, giving them equipment that could really help them to move forward and to promote the fight against cervical cancer. The management and trainees were elated about the presentation as it would enhance their service delivery and reduce the duration of treatment. Together we want to say we are so grateful to the Rotary Club for this presentation because previously we screened the women, we get positive cases and we don't have the necessary equipment to treat them. We end up referring them to Bato or higher facilities and they end up not going because most of these women are coming uh, at the down there. It is difficult for them to, I mean, get means of resource like money to travel. So we are very grateful and we are very happy because now we can screen a lot of people and we can give them treatment. So we are very, very grateful. These devices, 50 thermal coagulators, going to nearly 50 new institutions in the country we hope to extend the number of institutions that can offer a treatment for cervical precancer women will not have to travel long distances to assess this service and I, I, I believe that this is going to help in a big way to prevent cervical cancer in this country Stakeholders have, however, advocated for a national immunization campaign to protect the citizenry against cervical cancer. Fred Kwame Asari, Joy News, Bato. And the uh, Ghana Football Association has now uh, re elected its uh, incumbent president, Keto Kriku, who now has an opportunity to run Ghana football for the next four years. Uh, we have the latest uh, for you joining us now, is Musbao. Uh, who is uh, monitoring uh, all of the developments for Joy Sports uh, up north, where all of this action is happening. As well, thank you uh, for spending time with us and giving us some updates from where you are. The exercise has ended. Indeed, uh, Keto Kriku will now serve as the GFA president for the next four years. But has he made any comments yet? And was he looking forward to? Hello, blessed. I hope you can hear me. Yeah, um, it's been a very, a very decent, you know, elective congress here in Tamale. Um, the Ghana Football Association president, Kete Kriku, obviously has been elected for a second term, and this is despite the legal hurdles that it was characterized with. 
We know that there was uh, there is um, you know an injunction application hearing at the Accra High Court, which is slated for October 14. And the Ghana Football Association is very much aware of this, but they went ahead to organize the elections uh, with the hope that you know um, because the court hasn't heard on it yet, so they are free to go ahead and hold the elections. And 120 delegates did turn out for this election. 124 delegates were expected to be in attendance, but 120 of them were there. And the Ghana Football Association president was able to get a whooping 117 yes votes. Just two went against him, and one was uh, in abstention. So it was quite a massive endorsement for him in his second term. And that's exactly what he said in his speech after he uh, was sworn in that his election is testament to the faith that the football stakeholders have in him, hence why they've given him the nod to continue uh, as president of the association. He was quite profound about unity and even apologizing to individuals whom he might have hurt in his first term. And I'm sure this is possibly directing at people like Ken Faisal, you know, Elijah Gruza, maybe George Efrier, and George Efrier in particular, he mentioned him, he called him out, and said that he's, he's reaching out to him. He should come on board and help them fix Ghana Football Association and take it to the next level, which he's hoping to do. So uh, that's what has happened here. It was a very decent, orderly exercise that didn't take much time. Yeah, I see. <laughs> very simple exercise, of course, when you have just one individual contesting the race. Um, but how about George Afri? Any news of him? What, what the next line of action might be? Well, for George Afri, uh, George Afri, he, he has a case in court. He filed an application uh, of injunction in court. He's expected to be heard on October 14th. I'm sure he will go to the court with his lawyers to uh, look at that. He also has a case at the Court of Arbitration for Sports relative to his disqualification. And uh, he's calling the court to dismiss his disqualification. And the point is that if the hearing does go in his favor, what it practically means is that uh, this election that was held here in Tamale will be null and void. But I'm sure the Association handlers are very confident that George Afria possibly has no case, hence, you know, none of what happened here will ever be rendered useless. And just to point out also that it wasn't just the presidential elections that did take place, the election of members of the Executive Council also did take place. And uh, we saw five representatives from the Ghana Premier League in the uh, Executive Council. Oh, now, inter that's Black an Black interesting Black one. Uh, uh, I see James Kwesi appear there. <laughs> that's the former, <laughs> former coach of the national team. Absolutely. Former coach of the national team. And in fact, his election was one that raised some concerns because he's close to joining Sudan as the head coach of the Sudan national team. And people raised concerns about some potential conflict of interest. In the event, he goes there to work for Sudan FA, and at the same time, working for the Ghana Football Association, where will his priorities be? However, the delegate felt that he still has the competency and the skill to work for the Ghana Football Association as a member of the Executive Council. Mm. I got to speak to him after the elections, and he says there's absolutely no reason to worry about him being overburdened, working for Kumasi Asante Kotoko, working for the Sudan national team, and even working for the Ghana Football Association. There's no concern about him being overburdened, and even no concern about conflict of interest, because he, there's no way he's going to betray his, his country, and uh, even the fact that the talk about Sudan is not yet finalized. But he's not the only one in there. You can see Dr. Randy Abe, Chief Executive Officer of uh, Pando Heart of Lions. He got elected. Fred Champon, another seasoned administrator, also got elected there. And uh, you can see a few others. Nana Odro Safo also in there. Uh, someone like Eloya Mande, who is the chief executive officer of Karela United, he, he lost his bid to be there. Well, there was also representatives of the Division One League. Division One League, three representatives from the Division One League were also elected. And the current, uh, let me say, immediate past vice president of the Ghana Football Association, Mark Addo, he was elected. He got a whooping tech to two votes there. Really, really good for him. And uh, Gideon Fish also got his. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, Noel also got to be there. But in that very category of election, one man who failed to make the bid that surprised a lot of people is the manager of Asamojan, Samuel Enimado. He was part of the just, you know, just gone by 
by executive council and considering his cloud popularity, people did expect him to, you know, be able uh, to qualify and be part of the executive council, but he lost. He got just something about 13 votes there. So mm. it didn't quite turn out well for him. The last person on the executive council is, is Mrs. Gifty Oari Mensa, who is uh, representative right. for the Women's Premier League. Yeah. Interesting days ahead, I see, especially with Kwesi up here. But anyway, we we'll welcome you back home uh, with all the controversies when you bring them. Uh, of course, uh, that's uh, as well giving us some updates uh, on the GFA election. <laughs>